Once again, shalom from the city of Eilat, right by the Red Sea. This is Amir. It's uh, an unexpected uh, Facebook Live. And um, I just wanted to say a few words about the uh, colossal, colossal failure of the Palestinians and the Muslims once again to somehow uh, shoot down the decision of Donald Trump to recognize Jerusalem as capital of Israel. Ladies and gentlemen, as you know, the nations of the world are shocked. What uh, Donald Trump did literally caught everybody by surprise, including a lot of Israelis who never thought that they would live to see the day that a, uh, an American president will recognize Israel. Just let me explain also what happened just a couple um, hours earlier, Politico, which is a magazine that comes uh, out, um, basically exposed something very dramatic about Obama's administration, and that comes hours before the vote in the UN. Um, they exposed that uh, for the last 10 years, intelligence communities all around the world were monitoring how Hezbollah is laundering money in order to sponsor terrorism. They would uh, send drugs all the way um, in, into Europe and America. And then with the money, they would buy used cars and sell them to Africa. And now when the money is laundered and it's, it's clean, they would send it back to Lebanon. And they could, um, of course, sponsor terrorism with it. The Obama administration received uh, the full report on the what we call Cassandra um, operation and that it revealed everything, all the, the drug deals and all the terrorism and the money laundering of the Hezbollah and President Barack Obama decided not to operate, not to do anything about it in order not to embarrass the Iranians so the deal with the Iranians will come to pass. So not only that he paid cash to the Iranians, not only that he stripped off any possibility of Israel, from Israel to attack those nuclear uh, sites, but he also had, had decided to, to turn a blind eye to the um, operations of Hezbollah on American soil. And when that comes out, now comes the unbelievable uh, um, contrast of the Trump administration. If Obama, the last accord of Obama in the UN Security Council was actually to avoid his veto right in a resolution that basically said that even the Wailing Wall is not Jewish, then comes a, a President Trump right now and, and Ambassador Haley just voted veto against the United Nations Security Council that will annul President Trump's recognition of Jerusalem. Ladies and gentlemen, let me make it very clear. For the past 2,000 years, no nation ever recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Ever since we got kicked out of our land, nobody recognized it. It's interesting how Jerusalem, uh, you know, everybody adopted it, you know. Christians, abdot, abdot, I mean, the, the, I'm talking about Byzantines, adopted it and took it to themselves. Then the Muslims took it to themselves. So everyone took it to himself. And, and, and yet the rights of the rightful owners of the city were always taken and were always denied. And it's very interesting that <clears throat> a couple days ago, the um, administration, the White House, leaked information on what's coming next. Um, President Trump, in a few hours, is about to announce that uh, Israel is not the problem in the Middle East. It's Islamic terrorism and it's Iran. That which we've been telling the world for the last 30 years and no one wanted to hear, finally is acknowledged by the American administration as their strategic plan or modus operandi, the plan of action for the coming three more years. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a huge thing. So Trump just ordered uh, Ambassador Haley to veto the um, uh, Security Council that would annul his recognition of Jerusalem. 
So it's still standing. And he's going to tell the whole world the truth to their face. Israel is not the problem in the Middle East. It's Iran, it's the Hezbollah, it's Islamic, radical Islamic terrorism. You have to face it. Europe is afraid of Islam. And Europe, of course, all voted against, uh, I mean, for a resolution against Trump's decision. Even the UK caved in. It's so shameful because all those members voted for a resolution to annul Trump's decision. Yet America, in one single vote, vetoed this whole thing. In other words, they ridiculed themselves. And in their effort and in their attempt to look good in the eyes of the Muslim world, they only ridicule themselves because the Muslims will not like them whether they vote yay or nay. Look what's going on in London. Look what's going on in Berlin. Look what's going on in Brussels. Look what's going on, look what's going on in, in Sweden and in Norway. They are spreading havoc all over those countries. Whether those countries are for them or against them, it's irrelevant. They want to turn those countries into Muslim countries. So another saga, another episode of the circus called United Nation um, ended up with a defeat of the Muslims that pushed the Europeans and pushed the rest of the Security Council members to vote against um, Jerusalem being capital of Israel. And isn't that interesting that um, <clears throat> the same people who want us to recognize other people's right don't recognize our rights. Double standard. Have I said that? So this is it. I think it's a, it's a historic day. One more day and uh, Pre Vice President uh, Pence is coming uh, in a couple days to Jerusalem. He's going to visit the Wailing Wall. He's, he's going to make sure that everybody knows that America is behind President Trump's decision. And um, what an amazing day is to live. I mean, I, I, I don't know about you. I'm super excited. I'm super excited because for the last 2,000 years, the world could care less about Jerusalem. It just changed hands from, you know, every empire did whatever they want with, this, with Jerusalem. Isn't that interesting? And so Jerusalem would change hands and, and that's it. And the world went on. And finally, when Jerusalem is back in, its rightful, in the hands of its rightful owners, the world is going crazy. Everybody's afraid to, God forbid, offend the Muslims. And uh, it's quite interesting that um, Jerusalem was never an issue in the history of Islam. Never, ever was Jerusalem an issue. In fact, just a couple days ago, um, you know, some Muslim clerics said, you know, it's not mentioned in the Quran because what the Prophet Muhammad talked about wasn't Jerusalem, it was Medina. There was Mecca and there was Medina. When it was in Mecca, he talked about Medina. And this whole Jerusalem thing is obviously from the devil when it comes to their demands to, dis to hold it and to control it. And it's very interesting, you know, if you come to Jerusalem yourself, you see that the Arabs are treating it like a garbage bin. I mean, it's amazing how trashy this, their part is and how clean the Jewish part is. It's the same municipality, the same workers clean the same street. It's just that one part is treating it like trash and one part is respecting it. That's what I call the owner's mentality versus the renter's mentality. And, and again, I personally don't mind that Arabs live in Jerusalem. It, it's fine. We can, we can coexist, as we do, by the way. But I believe that it's time for people to get their head out of the sand and recognize that the Jewish people will never give up on Jerusalem. This is our capital. We're back in our land after 2,000 years. Jerusalem is back in our land. It's a 3,000-year-old capital, the Jewish people. Isn't that interesting? You know, I was thinking about it today. All those countries that are trying to lecture us on how Jerusalem is not ours, they robbed the Middle East. I'm talking about England. I'm talking about France. I'm talking about all the others. And all of their fancy museums, the British Museum, the Louvre, and all of that, they're all having artifacts that proves our Jewish existence in the land before Islam even existed. So on one hand, they came here in the 1800s and 1900s and robbed all of the antiquities. They charged money from everyone to see those artifacts in their museums. And they had the guts to tell the world that Jerusalem is not Jewish. 
when they themselves make money from our artifacts that they stole from our country and put it on display in their museums. Isn't that un unbelievable? All the artifacts that were found in, in archaeology in, in the land of Israel from the late 1800s, mid 1800s and on, were all showing, proving Jewish presence. These are the archaeologists who found the Herodian Street and Wilson's Arch and Robinson's Arch and the Southern Steps. They found remains of Jewish presence in Jerusalem from 2,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago. These are the countries that are now voting against Jerusalem being the capital of Israel. Unbelievable. The hypocrisy is breaking any possible record. Again, UK, France, and other countries are boasting with archaeological artifacts in their own museums that prove Jewish ownership of Jerusalem way before Islam was born. So they make money of the rest of the world in their own museums. But when it comes to the political arena, they completely show double standard. Now, if you say that the Western Wall and the Temple Mount and the the whole section of the old part of Jerusalem has no Jewish connection, no Jewish um, heritage there, then you need to close your own museums. You need to shut them down and you need to return the money to everyone who came to visit and paid money to see those artifacts over there. Interesting. I'm excited. I am so happy. You know, God is in full control. I am so excited about... Um, what's next jerusalem is back on the table the world is going nuts and the prophet zachariah could have never been so correct and and i'm, I'm just amazed at it guys be encouraged god is in full control and we live in the days of ezekiel in the days of isaiah in the days of zachariah after all those years of silence we are the generation that is watching so many prophecies being fulfilled. We are, this is a, a time in history where God is on the move, where great things are happening before our very eyes. I want to encourage you, this is also the time to get your act together, to get our act together. This is the time to be serious with our walking with the Lord. This is the time to serve the Lord with all our hearts, all our mind, all our soul, to love the Lord, to preach the gospel, to occupy as much as possible. The world is watching things that are unprecedented and we are the only ones that understand those things. I Today I have a group around the Red Sea, we're on a boat, you can, you can watch on, on Instagram, uh, Behold Israel, you can watch it. We were on a boat and I gave a whole teaching. I gave a whole teaching on the exodus from Egypt and on the crossing of the Red Sea. And I, I basically taught that when God is doing something, you can't stop him. And when God chose Moses, think about it. Moses, 80 years old, stuttering, sent to a nation that doesn't even know the name of its God, sent to a king, which was the leader of the world at that time, to tell that leader, I'm going to take your people, the people that you enslaved, they're going to get out of your land, and not only that, they're going to take the wealth of your people. They're going to take the wealth, they're going to take the jewelry, they're going to take the gold and the silver. And I'm going to lead them through the desert into a land that is not theirs, and I will give them that land. It's a land that is occupied by seven other nations, greater than them. I'll fight for them, and I will give it to them. I, the Lord... And you know what? Think about it. He told Moses, Moses, you're going to appear before uh, Pharaoh, and Pharaoh will not like it. In other words, God knows what Pharaoh's reaction is going to be before Pharaoh even heard about Moses or saw Moses um, before him. God knows all everything. And God told Moses, get ready, Moses. The things that you're going to do may not make sense to you. You know, it, it doesn't make sense to be the leader of a nation when you, when you're 80 years old, when 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 you know when you're a wanted person in that country, when 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 you stutter, and and when you go to go to a, a very strong leader and he might even kill you, nothing makes sense.
But when God is saying, I'll do that, I'll walk before you, just go, then you go. And I, I almost feel that we live in, in, in days just like that. Days where God is on the move of doing unbelievable things. And, you know, just as the Israelites had this unbelievable exodus, and just as God says, I bore you on eagle's wings, I'm telling all of us believers, get ready to be taken out of here. Get ready for our exodus. God will bear us not on eagle's wings. It's going to be within seconds, a split of a second, we're going to be out of here. I am saying we see things that our forefathers wished they could see. Even Paul wished he could see the things that we see today. We live in unbelievable times, and I am super, super excited. So I want to encourage you all. Thank you, uh, President Trump. Thank you, Ambassador Haley, for your courageous, courageous move today. In fact, Prime Minister Netanyahu just tweeted and said, Pre uh, President Haley, you're just like the Maccabeans. You, you lit the light and you scared the darkness. And that darkness, the UN is full of it. And it's enough to have one light to scare the darkness. You don't have to be a to have a bright light just one light and darkness flees and what i saw in the united nations security council today is one light there were 14 dark countries and there was one light and one light scared the darkness and that resolution was vetoed and shot down unbelievable so on behalf of the people of israel on behalf of the jewish people as someone who is of the tribe of Judah, someone who was born in Jerusalem, someone who is the first generation of his, of his people in the land of Israel, after 2,000 years, I want to thank President Trump, I want to thank Vice President Pence, and I want to thank Ambassador Haley for your courageous stand in these days for the people of Israel and for Jerusalem. And what we're going to hear in the next few hours from President Trump about Israel not being the problem. It's telling those nations the truth to their face. Now, some nations already get it. The Czech Republic just said that they look at Israel as a beacon of light. The Hungarian one said the same. The Polish said the same. The new government in Vienna, Austria, is saying the same. We're watching and seeing how Europe is becoming a divided, um, a divided continent. The clay and the iron is being obvious, as Daniel said. And soon, that rock, the rock of our salvation, will smash those feet. Hallelujah. So thank you, and uh, God bless you from the Red Sea. Not far. An hour drive from here is where the people of Israel crossed it from the Egyptian side to the Saudi side. I can't wait to teach you guys a great teaching on the crossing of the Red Sea. Why the Sinai, Mount Sinai, is not where you think it is. It is actually in Saudi Arabia. Why we found all the evidences, all the traces of the children of Israel crossing from one side to another. How come we found right not nearby Mount Sinai a gigantic rock that is split in the middle with signs of water that came out of it the split rock that Moses hit amazing things were here the Bible is not a fairy tale we have archaeological evidences as Psalm 85 says truth shall spring out of the earth and that what kills all those people who live in denial they they know they say that the false things they they believe their own lies but the evidence on the ground speaks volumes so Jerusalem belongs to the Jewish people. The Red Sea had been crossed by the Jewish people. And God promised us more than 3,000 years ago that he will bring us into our land and give us Jerusalem as capital. And he did. Israel is, that's why I named this ministry Behold Israel. When you look at Israel, you understand the times and the seasons and you see the unbelievable faithfulness of God in action. Wow. I'm so, 
I am so excited. Thank you for listening. Um, I'm going to give a message on December 22nd or 23rd, a uh, message on Christmas. Many, many people are asking me, Amir, do you think Christians should celebrate Christmas? So uh, should Christians celebrate Christmas? That will be the topic of the message. And I'm not going to tell you what I think right now. I'm going to share it with you on the 23rd. Stay tuned on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, and tune in to that message. Um, it's going to be very, very interesting. So thank you again, and God bless you from the Red Sea. Um, and um, I'll be back online if something happens. Again, God bless you all. Shalom from the city of Eilat. Bye-bye.